Okay, some of you guys asked for it, so here it is. This is a 2001 Toyota Echo 1.5 liter engine. This is the one that had the computer grounds, the last video that I shot. And what we're going to do with this one is we're going to address the P0550 power steering pressure sensor circuit fault trouble code. Okay, here's the trouble code. Again, P0550, power steering pressure sensor circuit fault. Next thing we want to do with a hard fault like this, hard fault meaning it's happening right now, or current, is we want to see what kind of data parameters we have available to us for this. So I'm going to go to data display. And this is just a normal routine process you would go through. You look at a trouble code, next thing to do would be to look for a scan tool data parameter. Just saves you time. Then we want to scroll through these data PIDs and see if we can find a power steering pressure sensor input and unfortunately it's not there. I know I'm scrolling fast. I've already looked. It's not there. So what that means now is we're going to have to do some manual tests at the power steering pressure sensor itself. Okay, location of this power steering pressure sensor is on the back of the power steering pump and we have a three wire connector that goes to it and that connector sitting right here in the open where we have pretty easy access. I think what we know right away based on the number of wires that this is not a conventional two wire power steering pressure switch. This is most likely as the code indicated a pressure sensor and so the testing of this is going to be very similar to any other type of pressure sensor on the car. Okay, the next thing is scope setup. What do we set our scope to to monitor a pressure sensor? A couple different ways we can do this. We can do the graphing multimeter or the lab scope, either one. The reason we can use a graphing meter, this isn't a very fast signal, so slower time bases are really necessary to look at it, and we can really use either one. I'm going to go to the lab scope, volts DC, which is a single channel as default. My settings, I'm at 5 seconds and 10 volts for my scale. If you wanted to, you could pick 5. My preference is to use 10. Okay, now down to the sensor. This is a 3-wire pressure sensor. Wiring is going to be a 5-volt reference, a signal and a ground. And this is typical, standard 3-wire sensor. This would be the same wiring as a potentiometer which would be a throttle position sensor or a map sensor, which is a pressure sensor. It's the same exact wiring. And it helps to know what, what wire is what when you're doing this, this test. A wiring diagram is going to help you. According to the diagram, the yellow is the signal. The brown is designated E2, which is a Toyota code. That's a sensor ground. And the VC or 5 volt reference circuit is red with a white. So I know wire color by my diagram, but let's say you didn't have a diagram. How could you handle this? What you do is you check all three wires and see what the reading is on all three. I'm going to start with the red white, which we already know from my diagram is my 5 volt reference. And all I'm going to do is back probe this with a T-pin. My black lead's going to go to a known good ground. My yellow lead's my signal. We're going to go to the scope and take a look. Okay, so you see on the scope we have five volts. This is our five volt reference circuit. This is the live number, which is 4.99 volts. And what you can do if you're, if you don't have a wiring diagram, what you can do is go through each wire. So I'll keep you focused on the scope here while I'm moving my T-pin to the three circuits and we'll see if we can identify these. Next one, I'm not going to tell you what color I'm going to. We'll see by the result here on what we have. And I'm now connected to the circuit and I'm reading 0.22 of a volt. For more detail, you'd, you'd want to lower your voltage scale 
we're not worried about that. This number's good, this .22 of a volt. And that's gonna be one of two things. Either that's gonna be a bad sensor ground because we want 100 millivolts or less, and that's actually 220 millivolts. That is either a bad sensor ground or that is my signal wire. It's one of the two. Let's do the next wire and see what we got. Still not connected yet. One of the things when you're checking grounds is, are you actually connected to that ground? We're doing a ground to ground voltage drop test and I've shown this before. I'm shake my leads and you know, the scale's kind of high to see that, but to see the movement of that, of that line on the bottom. Now I'm gonna connect to this wire and we'll see how smooth that is. And then if I shake my leads again, how it stays smooth, I am in that circuit now and I have a zero volt signal on that. It's fixed at zero. And I'm putting money on that being my ground. So the way you go through this without a diagram, on this case, we see five volts on one wire, 0.22, on another wire and zero on the third, chances are the zero one's your sensor ground. We know which one the five volt ref is. So our focus then is gonna be back to that 0.22 of, of a volt wire. And that is the yellow wire in this case. We use the diagram to back it up. I'm, I guess I'm just trying to give you both methods here. That is my signal wire, both according to the diagram and with the method that I just shared with you, which is check all three, see what you got. So that being my signal wire, the next thing we wanna do is we want to change the signal. So you have to think about the sensor you're working on and knowing that this is a power steering pressure sensor, we need to change power steering pressure to see a signal change and that's the next thing we're gonna do. So I'm going to start the car and I'm going to cut the wheel all the way to the lock position, which is gonna increase power steering pressure to the most that it can be. And we're gonna see what kind of signal voltage change that we have. That is all the way in the lock position. You see no, no voltage change here at all. We're staying at 0.22. Okay, go ahead and shut that off. Turn the key back on. Okay, two things I want to address. One was we had no signal voltage change when we cut the wheel and changed power steering pressure. The second thing that I want to mention to you guys because of some comments from my last video was how noisy this engine is. And it, it, one of you had mentioned it sounds like popcorn. I thought that comment was kind of funny. It, it actually is the exhaust that's rattling, rattling off the floor of the, of the car. When this thing had two engines put in it, obviously something wasn't put back together right. Some hangers broken or you know, something like that underneath. So it's the exhaust that's rattling on the car. Don't worry about the noise. That's really not affecting what we're doing. Back to the sensor, no signal voltage change. So we have a good five volt reference. We have a good ground. The last thing that we need to make sure of before we put a sensor in this is in this case, because my signal voltage is low, is the signal wire potentially shorted to ground? And it could be. So we need to address that to be 100% confident that this thing needs a sensor. So this part that I'm talking about, I have in section 10 of my book, which is signal circuit integrity testing. This is what I'm about to review with you. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take a measurement of this signal wire on the harness side. Now I'm on the sensor side right now on this yellow wire. I need to be on the harness side for this next measurement because I'm going to actually unplug the sensor and measure harness side voltage. So I have to move my T-pin to the harness side of the connector. This is an important step. Harness side voltage is what we're after here. Apologize for my hand being in the way. But I've now T-pinned the back side or harness side of the connector. And I'm going to focus you guys up, up on the scope when I do this. All I'm going to do is simply unplug the sensor 
and the result of this test is going to tell us the integrity of this signal circuit. Hopefully, it'll tell us. There are some differences in designs, and sometimes the simple unplug it test is not good enough, and we need to do another test where we're jumping the 5 volt ref to the signal using a resistor, and I've shown that in another video, and again, I have this information in my book. So, focused on the screen, we're at 0.22 of a volt. I'm gonna take this sensor now. I'm going to unplug it. Again, why are we doing this? We are concerned about the signal wire being shorted to ground. Okay, sensor is now unplugged, and what we see is my signal voltage has risen to almost five volts. It's actually 4.90 to be exact. What this tells me is the integrity of my signal wire from this sensor connector all the way to the engine computer is good. It's not sorted to ground and we definitely have a sensor problem 100%, no question about it. This thing needs a power steering pressure sensor. So just to review some of the, the steps that we did here, check the five volt reference, check the signal, check the ground, check the signal circuit while you're making, in this case, power steering pressure change. Signal did not change. Some of you might want, want to know what the number should be at what pressure, and truthfully, I, I can't answer that. I don't know what the normal power steering pressure voltage output is on this car. It doesn't matter. The fact that the pressure signal doesn't change when we change pressure tells you the sensor's dead. And number two, we have a trouble code for it. Immediately, it's a hard fault. So we know 0.22 was not a good number. And so before putting a sensor in it, because we have low voltage, we want to make sure our signal circuit is good. What a manufacturer is going to have you do is disconnect the computer, disconnect the sensor, and ohm the signal wire to make sure there's no opens and shorts. And I'm telling you, if you follow this method, you don't need to do that. If you understand circuit design, this one has an internal resistor that we're using to aid us in diagnosing this, and all we had to do was unplug it. So faulty power steering pressure switch on this Toyota Echo. That'll take care of that trouble code, and we're good to go.